to, uh, to see us via Facebook uh, live, but um, uh, we've got a few progress back toward being able to breathe well. But we're going to open with a word of prayer for our these uh, new prayer requests and many others that, that all of us have. And I hope that if folks have some that you'll call, text, email, put them in the comment section and we'll certainly be praying for you. Uh, but let's pray together as we get started. Especially as we get things off into the Word of God. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to worship Father, we love you, and there is so much happening in our world today, and Father, there is fear all over, but Father, we know that you, that your grace is sufficient to meet every need. Father, there are folks who are struggling with health, there are folks, many who are struggling with with loss of loved ones due to the virus and and various other circumstances. Father, uh, we stand as always, in need of you, in need of your grace, in need of your power. Father, I pray that you would minister uniquely in every situation, in every circumstance. Father, let us know that you are here and that you know us, you see our struggles and our insufficiencies. And Father, I pray that you would help us to realize that uh, we're not sufficient in and of ourselves to face the challenges we face but our sufficiency is of Christ and if he if he is lifted up then there is nothing that we cannot make it through Uh, so father bless our church and bless our time together as we gather virtually and in person and lord we pray that you uh, would be glorified in everything that we seek to do this day in Jesus name amen Just bear with us. If all else fails, I'll do it a cappella. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder
sun not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, right. he bled and died to take away my sins. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come. and take home what joy shall fill my heart and I shall bow humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great Packs a punch. That was great. I love that song. I love the the meaning and and the uh, the great reminder that it gives us that it's God who is who is great. And uh, I love that verse. Uh, our burden gladly bearing. He he went to the cross and uh, Jesus is the reason for all that we do. And we're kind of going to uh, follow along that, that, that mindset today. Um, you know, I came at kind of an odd, odd time in, in the history of Fair Bluff Baptist Church. We came at Christmas time, but we also came in the middle of COVID. And generally what a pastor wants to do in those first months, those first weeks, is kind of, uh, of lay a line down of, of, of where, where I'm coming from and, and where I hope that, that we... Uh, can go. And so we started this series, What Every Person Needs to Know. And last week we looked at, at the scripture and we saw what the psalmist declared that forever, O oh God, your word is settled in heaven. That God's word, uh, at the beginning of everything, God's word is the measuring stick by, er, by which we, we measure everything in this world. We measure truth by his word. We measure our opinions, preferences, and ideologies by his word. His word is the source of, of all truth. And today we're going to talk about salvation. God's Word is given to us so that you and I can know uh, something about His character, something about His, His mind. The Scripture teaches us that it will take eternity 
for us to understand and, comp and even begin to comprehend the mind, the authority, and the power of God. But God's purpose in, in all of human history, in, in the tapestry of human history that, that, that is being woven every day and every moment, every millisecond that we live, God's purpose is the salvation of mankind. From, from Adam's fall in the garden, before Adam's fall in the garden, God already had, had a plan in place for the redemption of humanity. And uh, today I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, and I do hope you have your Bibles out at home. Uh, uh, many of you and those who are uh, grab your Bible and turn with me to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1. And Peter is writing to uh, the Jews of the diaspora. And uh, he says, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And uh, we're going to take a look here at some of the things that, that he brings out in this very first chapter of Peter and, and elsewhere in the Scripture. I always tell people uh, that we interpret Scripture with other Scripture. That, that God never contradicts Himself in, in His Word. And, and we can see that, that the themes... Uh, that are that are brought forward here to us are carried out in the rest of God's word. But he he's writing to them. He's writing to us. God gives us His inspired world word, as we spoke of last week. Uh, we see that uh, in Second Timothy three or three sixteen, uh, he Paul tells Timothy and God, uh, the word of God is inspired. It's God breathed. It's it's perfect, and we're thankful for it. Uh, but Listen to what Peter says. Blessed be, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. I think all of us can say that there have been various trials that we have faced this year. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom, having, whom you... Having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see Him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when He testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed, revealed that not to themselves, but to us. They were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the Gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank You for this day. I pray that You would focus our hearts and minds completely. Uh, that we would lay aside every thought, every care, and every inhibition. And that we would look fervently to You to speak into our lives, to, to guide us. Father, we pray for Your Holy Spirit's power in this day. Father, we pray for peace, for freedom to worship in this moment. Father, I pray that You would forgive us from sin as we approach Your throne of grace and help us to know what it is to worship You in spirit and in truth. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. What every person needs to know about salvation. Again, last week we looked at the Word of God, the Bible. We talked about the authority of the Scripture in the life of the believer and in the church. That uh, the Scripture... Is, uh, is truth. It's truth without uh, any mixture of error. We, we often hear people speak that Christianese word inerrancy, but uh, we lift up the Bible as the authority in our lives, as the guiding uh, word that, that God has given us to, uh, to shape and to inform the life of a believer. 
uh, the, the end of Scripture, the, the purpose of Scripture is salvation. Uh, when Peter here is speaking to uh, these Hebrew believers, those and, and he's called the apostle to uh, the Jews, the apostle to the Hebrews, he, he speaks to them about the prophets, about the things of old that had happened, those things that had been prophesied about, that Jesus was the purpose of all of those things. Salvation was the purpose and end of, of uh, God's work in the history of the Jewish people and ultimately in the end of Scripture. He is the person the, and, and the message of the Scripture. Jesus Christ is. Salvation. You know, we hear that word and, and you know, a lot of people probably hear that word and, and, and don't quite understand or know the full spectrum of, of the meaning of that word. And it's a word that sometimes we throw around and, and we get so uh, 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 accommodated and, and, and used to it that we forget that it bears. We talk about this salvation. We're, we're talking about the gospel and we're talking about God's rescue, God's God's plan and purpose to redeem humanity from this thing called sin. How did salvation come to be? How is it that salvation is attained? And what is it that salvation is supposed to mean to me as the believer? Uh, salvation is God's plan. It's God's plan. It's God's method of saving everyone who would believe. When we are speaking about salvation, we're speaking about the purpose, the plan of God to rescue us from sin. It's that simple and it's that profound at the same time. The Scripture teaches us and, and Peter says that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's, it's, it's a gift given to us by grace. Grace is another word that sometimes we don't fully understand the depth of, of meaning when we hear it. We speak of salvation, we're speaking about grace. Grace is unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor from God. It's something that you cannot pay for, it, and thankfully, you know, it, it's something that God does not strip back from us. Grace, you're saved by grace through faith, Paul said in the book of Ephesians, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, lest any salvation is the gift of grace that none should perish but have everlasting life. 16 tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Salvation is God's plan, His method of saving every person who would Believe in Him. Given by His grace. His unmerited favor from God. It's the only way for us to get to heaven. We live in a world where everybody is searching for fulfillment. Ultimately, everybody uh, is searching for a means to that end of, of the afterlife. I think, I think human beings are programmed to worship. We, we, we see that everywhere. Uh, we... And worship is an easy thing to do. You look it up in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, and, the, bio, and uh, the dictionary says that worship is simply the act of lifting something up to a level of high esteem. We are created for worship. And we're created for, ultimately, for eternity. But Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus is the only way to get that thing that all of humanity is searching for. That... He is the only means to filling that hole that all of us know exists in our lives. John 14, 6, Jesus doesn't give us the option of writing Him off as a prophet, a great moral teacher. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through Me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, when, when the disciples, Peter, uh, was, was drugged before the Sanhedrin, P 
Peter stood before the Sanhedrin. This is a, a, a council made up of some of the same men that had put Jesus to death and had pushed for His crucifixion. And Peter stands before them and he declares, there is no other name in heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Salvation is God's plan of redemption. And it is the only way. God's plan, God's way, is the only way to heaven. Jesus isn't called in the Scripture the best way to heaven. He's not called in the Scripture one of the ways to heaven. Jesus, God Christ, is described and, and said to us, given to us as the only way to heaven. 18-20, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition of your fathers. Now he's speaking about the tradition of of, of the Jewish people. He says it was aimless tradition. Tradition that lacked what, it, what was necessary to attain salvation. He says, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He's the only way. He's the only means to that end in salvation. How did salvation come to be? It came to be in the plan and purpose that God put together in Jesus Christ. How is it received? Listen to this quote. The only human condition of salvation mentioned in the Bible is faith. The only precondition for salvation leveled at humanity is faith. There are other words that are used to, to, uh, that, that mean the same thing as faith in the Bible. Believing, receiving. We see those words over and over again. In John 1, uh, chapter, uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, he says, But as many as received Him, He gave the right to become the children of God, born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. To those who received Him, He gave the right to become the children of God. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him. In John 5.24, Most assuredly, I say to you, Jesus said, He who hears My word and believes on Him who sent Me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. In John, in Romans, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 16, listen to this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who, what? Believes. For the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in, for in it, and I'm going to read verse 17 because I love it, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith that it is written, the just shall live by faith. The only human precondition for salvation mentioned in the Scripture is faith. Faith, Hebrews tells us, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing. Faith is receiving, acknowledging, agreeing with, God's testimony in Jesus Christ. Believing, agreeing with who Jesus is and said He is. That He is the Son of God. God in the flesh. He said, if you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. God set into motion a plan for the redemption of the crowning jewel of His creation. He set into motion a plan to undo the damage that we did. To undo the problem that we created in sin. That we brought into the world God made perfectly. Salvation is God's method of saving, rescuing us from sin. Salvation is the only way to heaven in a world that says there are 
many ways. In a world that, that, that embraces universalism. We see in the Scripture and Christianity declares that He is the only way. Salvation is received by faith in Jesus Christ, by agreeing with, receiving, embracing the truth of the Gospel. But what is salvation to us as individuals and what is it to the church? If salvation was His passion, if at Easter time we celebrate the passion of Christ, that we celebrate Him going to the cross to die for us. And Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 that that He endured the cross. He, He counted it joy to endure the cross, despising the shame. If it was His passion, if it was His purpose, if it was if it was His joy to save us, then it should be our joy to tell others. To tell others how to receive what He has through grace given. Salvation is His passion and therefore ours. You know, something that that I have hanging on on the wall of my office and I've often tried to remember is this quote, and I'll get to it in a minute. But when we say that salvation is His passion and therefore our passion, we are saying that salvation, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, is the why behind what we do. Listen to this quote, lead with the why before the what. People will work for a what, but they'll give their lives for a why. Never assume people will understand the why. Some will likely oppose change, and those who do oppose are the loudest but that doesn't mean their opinion means the most. And at the bottom of this sheet of paper, it used to be in my own handwriting, but I ended up making another one. Why equals Jesus? The why behind everything that we do as believers and everything that we do as a church, every movement we make, every every thing we attempt, the why behind all that we do, the passion behind everything, Everything that we do is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the salvation of sinners. There are people in our world that are hurting, that are struggling in many, various ways. Addiction. Anger. And addiction comes in in all forms and fashions, but the why behind what we do is to meet hurting people where they are. Like Jesus did. Jesus is our, He should be our passion. That's why the Apostle Paul said, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He tells us that the passion of His life was to serve the purpose of Christ, and if He died, so be it. It was only heaven. It was only the perfection of heaven that he would gain. Salvation. Salvation is God's plan. It's received by faith, agreement with. Agreement with the gospel, agreement with what God has to say about sin. Listen to this passage of Scripture that you've probably known since you were a kid. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Listen to this. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's a byproduct of salvation in the life 
of a person who truly belongs to Jesus. This is the message of 1 John. The one who belongs to Jesus finds their passion in his salvation. They don't find it a burden to seek to follow his commands. If we love him, we follow his commandments. It's not that following his commandments is, produces salvation, but salvation produces a trend toward righteousness. A growth in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Salvation is the passion of the believer as it was the passion of Christ. And everything we do and everything we seek to do should be grounded and informed by the Word of God and motivated by a passion to see other people changed by the Gospel. We've got a world passionate about various, many and various things. But there is no passion that leaves an eternal mark. There is no passion that you and I possess that is eternally valuable except our passion for the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the work of of the gospel. Listen to what Peter goes on to say. Therefore gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. And rest your hope fully upon the grace. That is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children. Not conforming yourself to the former lust. Not giving yourselves to the old way and the old habit, the old spirit of the flesh that Paul talks about in Romans 6, 7, and 8. He says, not conforming yourself to the lost nature, the fallen nature of the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges. This is something I love about the kingdom of Jesus Christ and I love about the gospel. Without partiality. Peter, Peter goes on to say that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care who you are, where you come from, what your economic status is, and what your past possesses. What happened in the past, the Bible says that He... Without partiality, judges, according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here. You stay where? You stay here on earth. A flash in the pan as dust blown in the wind, a wave tossed in the ocean. This life is given to us so that we can dedicate ourselves to right passions. Conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Now what does he mean? He doesn't mean that we should cower in fear from God. He's talking about reverential fear from God. He's talking about people, saved people, who understand the gravity of what God has done for us in salvation in rescuing us from sin. He says, live out, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition, but you have been re redeemed by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without spot or blemish. He says, Jesus, Jesus is the definition of life. Jesus is our passion. If we belong to Him, if we truly understand what God has done for us in salvation, there is no other passion that should enter our lives, that should overshadow our passion for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, our passion for lost people, our passion for the gospel. Every person, before we leave this spinning rock in the expanse of space, needs to know 
about God's Word. God's special revelation given to us, the 66 books of Scripture, that are full of truth without any mixture of error. And we need to know before we leave this life. And there are people within miles, within feet perhaps, of your home that may have never heard the name of Jesus. Every person needs to know about God's salvation. God's plan to redeem all who would believe. That he set into motion before time began. Received only by faith. And as we have received it, we also should be motivated, passionate about giving it. As we have received it freely, our passion should be to see others. Love God. Love His Word. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we part ways today, we pray that You would minister in the lives of Your people. Father, we pray that You would help us to understand in, in, in whatever small way the magnitude of what You have done for us in Jesus Christ. Help us to understand in some small way the magnitude of our own sin and lostness so that, Father, our passion becomes seeing other people rescued from the same sin and the same lostness that once held us captive. Father, how grateful we are that we have a great high priest in Jesus Christ, one mediator between God and man who understands our weaknesses. Father, if there's one person today that is struggling with sin, struggling with the lostness in their own life, Father, struggling against the need to acknowledge that lostness, acknowledge that sin. Father, I pray that You would help them to see that at the end of it all, it doesn't matter what we gain in this world. It doesn't matter what other people think of us. But Father, all that matters, and the only thing that's going to gain us Your heaven is Jesus. Father, I pray that the passion of Your people. And going forward as it has been in the past, Father, going forward, let the passion of Fair Bluff Baptist Church be Jesus. Let it be the Gospel. Father, change us. Convict our hearts where conviction is needed. Father, help us to see with Your eyes and to hear with Your ears, to see the value in the people all around us no matter who they are or where they come from. Help it to be our passion to see them know You. And Father, and in knowing You, to see You change them from the inside out. Father, we love You and we praise You for Your salvation. Pray these things in the name of Jesus, the name which is above every other name, the name in which there is no other salvation, the name of Jesus. We love you and we thank you. Amen. We're going to see you all hopefully Wednesday, and you can join uh, services via Facebook Live and YouTube. Um, we could be doing this uh, uh, virtual uh, experience for the next uh, week. Uh, we could, if the if uh, church leadership deems it acceptable and, and numbers are trending in the right direction, uh, just go ahead and and come back and continue with uh, COVID precautions in place. But whatever we do. Uh, we're going to be the church wherever we are. We don't have to be in this building to be the church. This church, this building is not the church. The church is the people. And as long as we're uh, apart and away from here, we are the church deployed. Uh, so you just realize it and, and 
uh, embrace the fact that you're on mission wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you very soon. But Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, uh, I'll be back on doing uh, our uh, Wednesday night services, but we just continue to pray for normalcy to return. But uh, we love you. We're praying for you.